Hey guys, it's Dasha here and welcome to my channel, your antidote to boring English lessons. Today is going to be an awesome video because we're going to be talking about English vocabulary and expressions related to money. Because, well, who doesn't love money? Knowing how to talk about finances and money in general is extremely important for everyday communication. Plus, it's a topic that's universally understood. To make things easier for you guys, I will break down this video in three main parts. In the first segment, I'll talk about what I consider to be beginner-ish vocabulary, the second intermediate, and lastly, advanced English words and expressions. And feel free to directly go to the part that interests you the most by clicking on the timestamps. When talking about money to people in English-speaking societies, you need to keep two very important things in mind. Number one, it's considered very rude to ask someone about how much they earn. And number two, talking about other people's financial struggles is also considered quite rude. It's rude because it might sound as if you're somehow trying to undermine the person you're talking about. So avoid it at all costs. But in terms of basic vocabulary, I want to talk about the distinction between the words borrow and lend. So many non-native speakers get it wrong, so watch out. To borrow means to use something, like money, for a specific amount of time with the intention of giving it back. So you'd say, I borrowed money from the bank. In other words, you took out a loan. But to lend means to give something to someone like money for a specified period of time. For example, I could ask you, could you please lend me $30? And a lot of people mix these two words up and use them interchangeably, which is completely wrong. In summary, you could borrow money from a bank or a bank could lend you money. Next is the expression cash or card. You'll hear it when you're at a shop or at a restaurant when the cashier or a waiter asks you if you'd like to pay. Instead of saying the complete sentence, which is a mouthful, would you like to pay with cash or card, they could simply say cash or card. The word cash refers to physical money like coins or notes, and card means either debit or credit card like Visa, MasterCard, and so on. Moving on to the word discount. It's a word you'll very often see in shops, on TV. A discount is a reduction from the usual price of something. It can be used as either a verb or a noun. For example, you could say, this week Costco is offering a huge discount on TVs. Or in light of the coronavirus, EasyJet has discounted the price of domestic flights. You could also use the word sale in the same context as discount. Imagine that you're in Zara and you pick up a t-shirt that you want to buy, but you want to know if it's on discount. You can ask a salesperson, excuse me, is this shirt on sale or is this shirt on discount? Up next is the noun budget. So imagine that you're getting married and you're looking to spend a maximum of $5,000 on your wedding. You could say that your budget is $5,000. So it's like a plan of how much you can spend on something. And the same way us ordinary people have budgets, so do companies and governments because we all want to control our spending. You could use the word budget as an adjective as well to describe something that's cheap, like a budget car. As a verb, to budget, you could say something like, when I moved out of my parents' house, I had to learn how to budget, which means that you had to learn how you should spend your money. And lastly, the informal expression, dirt cheap. If something is dirt cheap, it means that it's like really, really super cheap. For example, I could say this dress was from Primark. It was dirt cheap. Now let's have a look at intermediate vocabulary that's associated with money. The word debt. 
Put simply, a debt is a sum of money that you owe to someone. In everyday language, if a person is in debt, it usually means that they owe the bank a lot of money. Like humans, companies and countries can also be in debt or have a lot of debt. You might have heard, for example, the expression sovereign debt or government debt. Turning to the words debit and credit, as the good old saying goes, for every debit there must be a credit. Debit and credit are basically accounting entries that record the flow of money. Even though they're accounting terms, they're still used by us ordinary folks. And quite often actually, and especially when dealing with banks. But unless you have a bit of accounting knowledge, you won't really be able to truly appreciate the words respective meanings. And that's what I'm here for. You can think of a debit as a plus and a credit as a minus. So imagine that you're a company and you buy a chair for cash. Since you're buying a chair, your chair or your furniture account will be debited because you're buying something and your cash account will be credited because you're paying for the chair and money obviously decreases. But you may have noticed that on your bank account statements, money coming into your account is referred to as credit and the money coming out of the account is debited. That's because in accounting terms, your bank account is considered a liability to the bank because they owe you money. When you open a bank account and put money into your bank account, you're essentially lending the bank money. And when an account is a liability in the eyes of accounting, any increase to that account is a credit and any decrease is a debit. But the word credit itself is a very broad term, which basically means taking out a loan. That's why you'll hear the term credit worthiness, which describes a person's ability to pay back debt on time. Next up is the word market. The ordinary meaning of market is either a place where people trade products or a part of the world where something is sold. But the term market that's used by economists has a completely different meaning. The complete term is financial market, but it's referred to as a market for short. It's a place where people trade financial instruments like stocks, bonds, and forex. You can think about the financial market as an umbrella term for the stock market, the bond market, and so on. You might have even heard these terms used on TV or news outlets like the financial market is crashing, which means that the value of various financial instruments is drastically decreasing which is obviously a bad thing. So if you want to buy Apple or Amazon shares, for example, these companies trade their shares in different financial markets. You've all heard it, the word recession. Australia is in recession and people stop spending. The UK is tonight officially in recession. Even if you're not an economist, you probably know that the word recession is not a good thing, which is true. A recession is a significant decline in general economic activity. By economic activity, we mean consumer spending, which is the money that us as consumers spend on buying food, clothes, and crap that we don't need on Amazon. For example, the pandemic has caused a global recession, which means that the entire world's economies are doing very, very poorly. The expression money talks. It means that people or companies with a lot of money can get whatever they want. In other words, money is power. So let's say that a rich person has committed a crime and hired an expensive badass lawyer that has eventually won his case. And let's imagine that this rich person had a successful court case only because he hired an expensive lawyer. Here you could say he hired the best lawyers and won the case. Money talks. Sad but true. Moving on to the difference between the phrases to go broke and to go bust. If someone is broke, it means that they don't have any money. It's an informal expression and you could use it when, for example, let's say your colleague asks you, hey, do you wanna grab dinner after work? And you say, oh, I'd love to, but I'm broke. 
meaning you don't have any money to buy the dinner. But the phrase to go bust refers to businesses or companies that lose a lot of money and as a result shut down. So let's say that a shop across the street closes and you ask someone, hey, what happened? They could say it went bust, which means that it went out of business because it ran out of money. And finally, let's look into the more advanced idioms and vocabulary, the fun stuff. To bring home the bacon. It means to earn money and to make a living. So say for example, you're working very hard to support your family. You could say, I work hard to bring home the bacon. It's a great little idiom that you could drop in a casual conversation and it will definitely buy you a few giggles. Next is the idiom to pour money down the drain, which means to waste money for no good reason. For example, imagine that I have an iPhone, an iWatch, and a couple of MacBooks lying casually around in the house, and then I buy the latest iPad, which I will never use. Buying that iPad is like pouring money down the drain. Up next is the word mortgage. Like the word debt, here the T is silent. So it's not mortgage, it's mortgage. A mortgage is a type of loan that you take out to buy a property, like a house or land. So if you don't have enough money to buy a house for cash, you will take out a loan, which will be secured against your house. This means that if you're unable to pay back your mortgage slash loan, the bank can take away your house. If you didn't already know what a mortgage was, well, now you know. To give a ballpark figure. This expression is also very commonly used in the workplace. And by the way, if you want to learn more about common expressions used at the workplace, make sure to check out this video over here after you're done with this one. If you give a ballpark figure, it means that you're giving an estimated amount. So let's say that you're an accountant and you're preparing the year-end accounts, but you're not completely done with them and your boss asks you to give him a ballpark figure of the profit for that year. You could also use the term rough estimate, but ballpark figure just sounds way cooler. To chip in is a very, very commonly used informal expression and it's something that you should definitely write down and learn this very, very second in case you didn't already know it. It means to contribute an amount of money. Imagine that your friends want to buy another friend a birthday present. You will all chip in and buy him that present. This means that you will all contribute some money in order to buy that present. Next is the phrase to pay peanuts and it simply means to get paid very little money. As an example, I could say that at my current job as a waitress, I get paid peanuts instead of saying I get very little money or I'm underpaid. The expression daylight robbery is used to describe an unfair trade that is very clear and obvious kind of like robbing a person in broad daylight. For example, I could say that the amount of rent I pay here in London for my flat is daylight robbery because it's so expensive and it's definitely not worth the money. Coming up next is the American idiom a dime a dozen. It means that something is common and easy to get and therefore worthless. Sticking with the example of low paying jobs, you could say that low paying jobs are a dime a dozen here in London, meaning that there's so many of them and they're not worth anything. And last but not least, and yes, I saved the best for last, the expression to take them to the cleaners. It means to cheat someone out of their money. So let's say that you fell for some kind of online scam and they, wh whoever they may be, ended up stealing your money. Somebody could say they took you to the cleaners and stole your money, meaning they wiped your account of money. They made it clean. And to that end, we're done for the day. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this video useful. Drop me a comment below with your favorite idiom relating to money and make sure to hit that like button if you loved this video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!